The Peptide Files, Episode 2, Thymosin Alpha-1, The Immunity Whisperer. Welcome back to The Peptide Files, folks. I'm Dr. Kristen Lindgren, and if you're just tuning in, thanks for joining us. In this series, we talk all things peptides. I thought this topic had already been beaten to death, but based on feedback from the first episode, maybe it's not quite dead yet. Just to recap, peptides aren't medications. Well, most aren't, anyway. They aren't hormones. They're signaling molecules. Short chains of amino acids stuck together that run around in the body, turning up or turning down the volume on pathways you're regularly using anyway. They can't override a system. They can only adjust volume. Because they capitalize on processes your body has naturally, peptides are typically accepted with open arms by the human body and have basically minimal, if any, side effects and no toxicity. Let me explain that another way. The cells in your body are like tiny factories. They're running assembly lines, making proteins. Think of this like a Tesla factory making parts. How does the Tesla factory know they need to make more car doors to replace all the ones keyed by people who hate Elon Musk and Doge? A phone call. Someone has to call the factory and say, hey, we're good on wheels and batteries, need more car doors. So the car door assembly line speed gets turned up and the rest of the assembly lines keep production business as usual. Peptides are like that phone call. They don't go into the factory. They don't help with the labor or pick out the paint color. They simply make the call. Peptides are tiny signaling molecules that bind to receptors on the outside of cells, the factories, and tell pathways inside the cells to increase or decrease production. Got me? Okay. In our last episode, we covered BPC-157, the duct tape for humans peptide that Big Pharma would rather you forget ever existed. Today, we're stepping into a darker, more mysterious corner of the peptide world, the immune system. I'm a true crime addict. Medicine basically runs the same playbook. Picture this, an elite immune agent. Think John Wick, like last week, but you know, microscopic, silently stalking bad guys in the bar, only opening fire when your immune system starts acting like that one D-bag who stole his car and whacked his dog. (laughs) That agent is thymosin alpha-1, used in cancer, autoimmunity, Lyme, mold, viral infections, and up until recently, COVID protocols. Thymosin alpha-1 is the Baba Yaga of the immune system. It doesn't scream, doesn't suppress, doesn't overcorrect. It modulates. It brings justice. In other words, it brings balance to the world when evil has taken over. Despite decades of research, amazing safety data, and global clinical use, it has been green-lighted, then, well, frankly, banned by the FDA. Why? Let's get into it. What is thymosin alpha-1? Let me take you back to the forgotten organ of your youth. What? What organ are you talking about? Buried behind your sternum, like an old relic of a past life, is this thing called the thymus. It doesn't get much airtime in med school or on TikTok, probably because it quietly disappears on you by the time you're old enough to rent a car. But when you were a kid, it was a powerhouse, like a military-grade immune training facility. T cells walked in as clueless freshmen and came out with elite sniper level precision, ready to neutralize viruses, hunt down rogue cells, and restore order. The head instructor, Thymosin Alpha 1. 
Thymosin alpha-1 is a naturally occurring peptide that helps regulate the immune response. It promotes the production of T cells, your immune system's special forces, enhances natural killer or NK cell activity, and helps your body distinguish friend from foe, which is kind of a big deal when you're dealing with infections, cancer, or autoimmune chaos. Zidaxin, the brand name for thymosin alpha-1, was granted orphan drug designation by the FDA in the U.S. for conditions like malignant melanoma, liver cancer, hepatitis, and HIV. In layman's terms, an orphan drug means it was designed to treat rare diseases that big pharma doesn't usually touch because the market is too small to be, well, profitable. So the government offers tax breaks, research incentives, and seven years of market exclusivity to make it worth their while. But here's the kicker. Despite orphan status, Zidaxin was never actually FDA approved in the U.S. or manufactured here. It was researched here, yes, for the tax breaks, but manufactured in Italy and only available overseas. In the U.S., thymosin alpha-1 was only ever available through compounding pharmacies. Well, it was until it wasn't. More on that in a sec. How it works. Immunity's version of the horse whisperer. So how does thymosin alpha-1 work? Thymosin alpha-1 doesn't hype up the immune system. It doesn't shut it down. It brings it back to center. Enhances T-cell function. Think of thymosin alpha-1 like a life coach for your immune cells, teaching your T-cells to be leaner, meaner, and more effective. Stimulates interferon and interleukin production. That means better viral defense and less cytokine craziness. Regulates Th1 and Th2 balance. If you're a nerd like me, you know that getting this balance right is key in autoimmunity allergies, and chronic infections. Having said that, no sane person wants me to explain what Th1 and Th2 balance means. Trust me. Moving on. Reduces immune exhaustion. Perfect for the burned out immune systems we see in mold illness, chronic Lyme, long COVID, and cancer. It's not an immune stimulant. It's an immune modulator. Big difference. It's like hiring a systems analyst instead of a drill sergeant. Clinical uses. Where thymosin alpha-1 shines. Cancer. Thymosin alpha-1 has been shown to improve survival rates in patients with liver cancer, melanoma, and lung cancer. It enhances the efficacy of traditional therapies and reduces side effects, even in combination with conventional checkpoint inhibitors we see a synergistic effect. Autoimmune disease. Instead of slamming your immune system with immune suppressants like biologics and steroids, thymosin alpha-1 nudges it back into alignment. It's been studied in lupus, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and type 1 diabetes, mold illness, and Lyme. These conditions trash the immune system. Thymosin alpha-1 helps reprogram immune tolerance, rebuild immune strength, and keep pathogens in check. Viral infections, HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HPV, shingles, and yes, COVID. Countries like China and Italy used thymosin alpha-1 aggressively during the early stages of the pandemic. Here, if you brought it up, you were canceled. The results of this study suggested that thymosin alpha-1 could support immune function by restoring lymphocyte counts and reversing T-cell exhaustion. In this review, thymosin alpha-1 reinforced its antiviral and immune rebalancing capabilities. I've seen it work wonders in my own practice. Patients who were sick for years started making real progress. Next up, the crackdown. So why isn't this miracle peptide available in your neighborhood pharmacy? 
why can I no longer even write you a prescription for it from a reputable compounding pharmacy? Well, same story, different peptide. Although never formally available here in the U.S., Thymosin Alpha-1 was on the market through 503A and 503B FDA-registered compounding pharmacies for years. Then one day, about a year into the pandemic, it was gone. The regulators said no more of this and punched down on the pharmacies making it, as well as providers prescribing it, promoting it, or even thinking about talking about it. Hard. In early 2021, the FDA reclassified thymosin alpha-1 as a, quote, biologic that cannot be compounded. This typically has to do with the length of the peptide being 40 amino acids or more. Thymosin is 28, so I don't know if there's a clerical error. Anyway, they don't like the number of amino acids it contains, but their real public rationale? undisclosed concerns about safety and efficacy and claims that it was being marketed for COVID without formal approval. Don't get me started on that. You never heard of them as an alpha one. It never existed. Look right here. This is called a neuralizer. It's a gift from some friends from out of town. This red eye here will isolate the electronic impulses in your brains and more specifically the ones for memory. I am just a figment of your imagination. Come on, you love that movie. Later in 2023, they doubled down by placing it in category two, meaning it carried supposed safety risks and could no longer be used in compounding under section 503A. But by late 2024, Even the nominator of the peptide withdrew their nomination, and the FDA backpedaled and announced they'd revisit the issue with a committee, a committee they would appoint themselves, of course. After hours of testimony from compounding pharmacists and providers who'd been successfully using the peptide with their patients for decades, without adverse events, I might add, the committee voted unanimously against allowing the compounding of thymus and alpha-1. That means if a patient wanted to continue or start using thymus and alpha-1, they would need to go to the black market to get it. According to the FDA, despite millions of doses, hundreds of trials, and decades of clinical use, while well, there just, quote, wasn't enough proof that a peptide made by your body was safe enough for you to use, even if that decision was between you and your doctor. I guess they know best. Let us not forget that every drug pulled from the market for killing people here in the United States was at some point deemed safe and effective by our FDA. The entire hearing is absolutely maddening. If you need to jack up your blood pressure, I'll link to all 205 pages right here. The Vladonix workaround. Now, you know I can't leave you without a workaround. Enter Vladonix. Vladonix is one of the original peptide bioregulators developed by a Russian scientist, Dr. Vladimir Kavinson. Are they all Vladimir's? back in the 1970s. It's an extremely small peptide, just two or three amino acids long. Like thymosin alpha-1, Vladonix is derived from the thymus and is designed to regulate immune function by supporting the activity of T lymphocytes and boosting the overall function of the thymus. It's not the same molecule as thymosin alpha-1, but think of it as a close cousin from a different side of the peptide family tree. Used in Russia for decades, Vladonix has been part of clinical programs for aging, chronic illness, and immune system regeneration. Is there a robust stack of double-blind, placebo-controlled U.S. studies? Uh, No. Does that mean it doesn't work? Also no. Clinical outcomes suggest that for some patients, Vladonix may offer a gentler immune balancing effect and is available as an oral peptide bioregulator, making it easier to access than its blacklisted cousin. Peptide bioregulators work a 
a little differently than signaling peptides, but they have similar end results in this instance anyway. We'll save the bioregulator talk for another day. So while regulators are taking an ax to demonstrably safe and effective immune system support for patients, bladonics is a useful and, as of the time of this recording, yet still available option. Final thoughts. I'm not saying thymosin alpha-1 is the answer to everything, but I am saying this. It's safe. Allegedly. The regulators disagree, but have been less than forthcoming with any data to substantiate their concerns. We do, however, have studies showing placebo carries more side effects than thymosin alpha-1. It's well studied and well smeared, I might add. There are plenty of studies out there with one might consider questionable funding that argue this peptide is junk. It's effective, in my humble opinion, and that of everyone I know who's ever taken it, and in many, many published trials, available right on the government's own website database. And when the regulators give any natural therapeutic the neuralizer, well, it usually means we're right over the target. Let's just call this one more thing you weren't ever supposed to find out about. Remember, in functional medicine, we don't worship any one intervention. The body is complicated and needs full system support. Diet, detox, supplements, hormones, mindset, sleep, labs, light, energy, connection, and yes, sometimes a peptide or two. We know how the man feels about peptides. Thymosin 1 is no different but the data speaks, as does personal experience. This isn't a magic wand, it's a tool, and when used wisely, it can do a lot of good. Or it did, anyway. Thymus alpha-1 is certainly a peptide I'd want on my team when the world gets weird. And let's be honest, things are getting pretty mother weird. That's a wrap on episode two. If you like deep dives on all things peptides, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and share it with someone who needs to know that even if peptides aren't stamped with regulatory approval, the science behind them is peer-reviewed, published, and isn't woohoo. This is not medical advice. Talk to your own doctor before taking any medication, supplement, vitamin, food, water source, or peptide. I'm just a girl who talks to herself when her kids aren't home with a few degrees. Anyway, next episode, I haven't decided what to go after next week. I have some thoughts, but if you have a suggestion, please leave it in the comments. Regardless of which one we choose, it's probably on a blacklist somewhere. Until then, stay curious, stay skeptical, and remember, you're the only one responsible for your health care. This is Dr. Kristen Lindgren signing off from the Peptide Files. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.